Hey guys, in this tutorial, we're gonna look at how to create a line boil effect on text and animations in After Effects. This will give everything sort of a wiggly, hand-drawn look. And we're also gonna create a preset that you can then drag and drop onto any of your animations or text titles. All right guys, as I mentioned, we're gonna create a line boil effect in After Effects, and you can easily apply this effect to any of your existing animations or text that you're working with. However, if you wanna know how to create a hand-drawn line boil animation completely from scratch, Boone has a tutorial on the Premium Beat channel where he walks through the entire process, drawing his animation in the Procreate app, and then importing that into After Effects. I'm gonna walk you guys through creating the line boil preset in After Effects using a few simple expressions. But don't worry, everything's gonna be really easy to follow, even for beginners. Also, I will have a simple project file and the preset available to download for free, so you can start using that immediately if you want. They will be on the blog post, and a link for that will be in the description. All right, guys, let's jump over to After Effects and get started. So what I've got in After Effects is kind of a very simple vector-style animation. You can see where this little strawberry animates on screen and everything kind of stays still and static here. And this is kind of intended for there to be like a voiceover narration for the client. And the boil effect will make the animation look a little bit more lively. And I think the client will appreciate that. And plus it's pretty easy for us to add this on our end. So it makes it look like we did a little bit more as well. So let's go ahead and create this boil effect on this animation. First thing we're gonna do is actually right click and I'm just gonna create a new adjustment layer. And I'll just go ahead and name this boil effect. And with that adjustment layer selected, let's come here to Effect, and we're gonna go to Distort, and we're gonna select Turbulent Displace. And this really is the core of kind of creating our boil effect. You can see off the default here, we get really distorted results. So we're gonna to wanna to tone this down quite a bit. And the two main parameters we're gonna adjust are the amount and the size. Now for the amount, I typically recommend setting this between five to 10. I'm gonna set it at 10 here, just so we can see this a little bit more with the tutorial. And then for the size, I recommend setting that between 20 to 60. I typically, when I first start out, I set the amount to 10 and the size to 20. I find those are pretty nice base numbers just to start off with. Now right now, it's not really immediately apparent what has happened. If I zoom in here, you can see we're getting a little bit of distortion on everything where it's kind of just a little bit kind of squiggly or wiggly. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn the effect off here and you can kind of see with that off and on what that looks like. And then if I actually animate the evolution here, we're gonna kind of see that bubbling occurring. Now to create our boil effect, what we wanna do is have it change and kind of pause for a few frames and then change again. We don't necessarily wanna animate the evolution here because if we do this, it almost gives it like a watery look. You can kind of see how that looks. Now you can technically keyframe the evolution kind of with these stop keyframes, but we're actually gonna use an expression that's gonna make this a lot easier. So I'm gonna zoom back out here. And if we go over to the evolution options, if we toggle this down, we're gonna see we have this option for random seed. And this is kind of the secret for creating our boil effect pretty easily. You can see if I go ahead and scroll through this, it's just gonna go through and randomly kind of change that boil effect. So you can already see, just when we scrolling on this, we're kind of getting the boil look that we're going for. So we just need to tie some expressions into this random seed setting. Now, another thing that's gonna make our boil effect really nice is that we want to just animate the boil effect independently from the frame rate. So you can actually see this animation is at 24 frames per second. And we have things like the strawberry comes in here, he falls in pretty smooth. And we have this windmill moving in the background. And I don't wanna adjust the frame rate on those. So we want the boil effect or kind of that bubbling to change a few times per second, but we don't actually want it to affect the frame rate of the entire animation. And we're gonna actually be able to take care of that as well, because we're gonna use a posterized time expression. So let's just start creating that and I'll kind of explain a little bit more as we go along. What we need to do is come over here to the random seed stopwatch. And I'm gonna hold alt and click on that stopwatch. You'll option click the stopwatch there if you're on a Mac. You can see it opened up the expressions here for us with this random seed effect. You'll also see it in red there. So I'm just gonna scroll down here just a little bit. And what we wanna do is come over here to this little play symbol here and that's the expression language menu. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click on that, come up here to global, and then we're gonna select the posterized time expression. And that'll go ahead and add that here to our effect. And we can see what this says, it says posterize the time and then frames per second. So what we need to do is put in how many times per second we want this random seed setting here to change. And that's gonna essentially give us our kind of boil frame rate, which will be independent from the frame rate of our composition. So a nice number I like to start out with this is gonna be four. So I'm just gonna highlight that frames per second right there in between the two parentheses. I'm just gonna type in four. So that's gonna allow that to change four times per second. 
I'm gonna click at the very end of the expression here because we're actually not done. If we click away from this right now, we're gonna get this warning saying, okay, this is, has an error in it. So what you do is come back down here, click after the posterized time expression, and just insert a semicolon there, and then come back over here to the expressions menu, click that, we're gonna come up here to random numbers, and we're gonna select random. So basically what we're saying here is, for this posterized time effect, change it four times per second, but we need to give it a value, and that value is gonna be a random value, and in between these two parentheses, we need to type in 100. So what we're saying now is, four times per second, select a random value between zero and 100 for this random seed effect. So now when we click away, that warning should be gone. If we actually scroll through here now, we're gonna see we're getting that nice kind of boil effect happening four times per second on our animation. And here's the full expression on screen. If you do just wanna manually type that in instead of using the expression menu, make sure to use a capital T on the posterized time because these expressions are case sensitive. Now, as I was explaining before, this boil effect is actually independent from the frame rate of the composition. So our boil effect is happening four times per second, but you can actually see the animation here with everything else is actually occurring at the native 24 frames per second. So that's nice. So the boil effect isn't kind of slowing down the windmill and it's not making our other animation choppy just kind of changing those edges on everything, giving it more of a hand-drawn look. And that's why I really like using this expression as opposed to using an overall posterized time effect on everything in the composition. Now, as it's set up right now, we can easily change this amount and size right here, kind of in our effects controls panel, but it's not super easy for us to change this frame rate on the posterized time effect. If we want to change that, we have to come down in here into the expression menu and change that value here. So if I want to change this to something different, like maybe eight times per second, I have to come in here type in that eight, and then we can now see that has been updated, so we're getting a little bit of a faster boil effect happening. But we can actually add a slider control here to our effect and link that to this expression, and that'll make it a lot easier for us to change that value without having to dive into the expression, and then we can also save it out as a preset a lot easier. So I'm just gonna scroll up here and I'm gonna select my adjustment layer, just make sure it's selected. Come up here to effect, we're gonna come down to expression controls, and we're gonna select this slider control. And now let's go ahead and let's rename the slider controller line boil frame rate. So I'm just gonna click it and hit enter, type in line boil frame rate. And just to start this out, I'm gonna set this slider value to be four. And that's not gonna change anything just yet. We need to link this to our expression. So down here on a random seed expression, I'm gonna click in here. And I wanna highlight this number that's right after posterized time. So I'm gonna highlight that just with my mouse there. And let's come over here to this pick whip. Go ahead and click that. We're gonna drag this up to that slider for the line boil frame rate. And you can see when we connect those two, it's basically gonna say, for this posterized time effect, look at whatever value is here for this slider. So this allows us to kind of adjust that frame rate from here. Now, before you do anything else, one thing you do wanna look at here is down here in the expression, we need to add one more kind of in parentheses there, so close parentheses. So I'm gonna add another close parentheses there, you can see so how that ends with two of those. Depending on your version of After Effects, sometimes you need to add this, sometimes you don't. I found in older versions of After Effects, it will add it automatically. But in the newer version here, I actually had to insert that in. So if you are getting an error with this, you may just need to add in that extra closed parentheses there. So when I click away now, we're gonna see we don't get an error. If we scroll through here, we're getting our boil effect occurring four times per second. And again, if we wanna change that, we can just come up here to this and I can change it to something like 12. And we'll get a really fast boil here. So again, this just makes it a lot easier for us to change that frame rate right here in our effects controls instead of diving into this expression every time we wanna change that boil frame rate. Now that we've created our line boil effect, let's go ahead and save it out as an After Effects preset. So before we save this out to a preset, I recommend setting your amount, size, and line boil frame rate settings here to kind of a generic setting that, that's good for starting out. What I'm gonna do in my case here is have it be on 10, 20, and then for the frame right here for the line boy, it'll be at four. And once you have those set up to whatever values you prefer to start out with, I'm just gonna click on this line boil frame rate. And I'm gonna hold shift and also click on the turbulent displace. And to save it out as a preset, we need to go over to the effects and presets window. If you don't see that, just come to window here and come down to effects and presets, just make sure it's open. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this little post-it note here. Again, make sure these are both selected. I'm gonna click on that. And this will open up the Explorer window and allow us to save this out in our user presets folder. So I'm just gonna name this line boil preset. Also wanna note, if you do download the preset directly from the Premium Beat blog, this is the folder you need to drag and drop it into. You're gonna see it's gonna be under your documents, Adobe, and whatever version of After Effects you're using, and then user presets, and just drag and drop it into that folder. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click save. So now let's navigate to another example I've got here with some text. 
So this boil effect works really well on kind of the trendy travel text that you see in a lot of videos on YouTube and Instagram. And I've got some text here in my composition I wanna drag and drop the boil effect onto. So with that text selected, I'm just gonna come over to the effects and presets panel. I'm just gonna search for line boil. And now we can see there's our line boil preset. So I'm just gonna select it and drag and drop it onto the text. Now if we go ahead and ram preview this, you can see we're already kind of getting some of that boil effect happening on our text here. Now with text, you may want to increase the size and the line boil frame rate here a little bit. So for the size amount here, I'm going to bump this up to 40. And then for the frame rate on the line boil, I'm going to bump this up to eight. And now you can see we're getting a little more movement, kind of that wiggle and jumping around with our text. So using that preset makes it super easy to drag and drop it onto really anything you want to add a line boil to. Another thing that's great for the line boil effect is kind of patterns and backgrounds. So you can see here, I've got this animated 90s pattern here. And let's say I wanted to use this for maybe a presentation or something like that. But this current movement is a little bit extreme. Maybe it's a little bit distracting. Maybe it's too much for what the client wants. So we could kind of change this up a little bit. So I'm just gonna select my footage here. I'm gonna right click, come up here to time. I'm just gonna select freeze frame. So we're just gonna freeze this current frame of the animation. So now we don't have any animation going on. So kind of an alternative take for this, I might apply the line boil preset just to this pattern background. So I'll just drag and drop that onto there. And now if I go ahead and ram preview this, you can see we're getting a much more subtle animation, but we are getting a little bit of movement there, so it's not completely static. So it's a nice way to create some kind of alternative looks on backgrounds and patterns just using the boil preset. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial and don't forget to download that free preset from the blog post. Also, another tutorial we have that you guys might wanna check out is how to create a watercolor look in After Effects. It works really well in conjunction with the line boil effect. All right, guys, I'm Charles of Premium Beat, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.